guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell, based on the title today, we are doing a comparison between the Hermes Birkin 25 and the Margot 10. This has been a highly requested video. There's a lot of ways at which both of these bags are quite similar, but they're also very different. In today's video, I thought we'd talk about the 10 ways that they are similar, 10 pros for the Birkin, 10 pros for the Margot, as well as which do I recommend. When you look at these two bags, they are quite similar. Both of them are tote style bags. They're kind of that open style, even though the Birkin does have a flap. They both have rolled handles they both have feet they both are slouchier like they kind of have a little bit of a slouch or relaxing to them of course there's the Birkin Cellier which looks a little bit more structured but the traditional Birkin it just leans a little bit slouchier when you think about slouchier bags versus the on the go or like the Prada Galleria like those bags feel a little bit more like structured put together yet at the same time they both sit upright they don't collapse onto themselves versus bags like the Neverfull or like the Goyard totes like that. I remember I had this YSL tote and it would just always collapse on itself, whereas these feel a little bit slouchier, yet they still sit upright. It's kind of like that perfect combination of something that is both put together but slouchier. For these two styles that I have, the dimensions are pretty similar. The Birkin, it's 25 centimeters long versus the Margot, it's 10 inches. The styles I have, they're both in a grained leather, although they both do different variations. There's also very minimal branding. Hermes, you can just see with the row, you can just like barely see it. And then the final way at which they're very similar is they're both, I would say, celebrity Oh, that's a really not the word I want to use. But the women behind these bags aren't just like random famous people. Both of these bags were designed by very iconic, fashionable women. Obviously, there's the story of Jane Birkin on an airplane sitting beside Louis Dumas. She drew the design she wanted on an airplane sickness bag. Of course, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, this is their brand, The Row. They were definitely involved in the design of the bag. That's kind of an interesting aspect. This isn't just, you know, any random bag. The bags were designed for the women to suit their lifestyles and what they were looking for in a handbag. So just in summary, aesthetically, they have very similar characteristics. Now, I think there are many ways that they're different. So let's talk about the pros when it comes to the Birkin. And with the Birkin, I'm going to really have a huge asterisk beside a lot of these points. And the point is, if you can get one or pay the premium pre-loved price. But I think Hermes, they have a great variety of leather. I don't even think any handbag brand offers this range of leathers, type Types of leathers. Another pro about the Birkin is they offer a huge color variety. Again, we're gonna put that huge star beside this pro if you can get it or pay the pre love premium price, right? But the color offering is just kind of out of this world versus the row, not so much. Another pro about the Birkin, again, if you can get it or pay the pre love premium price, I think there's a style variety, like a greater range of, yes, they do the 25, 30, 35, but they also have the shoulder Birkin, and I know the Margot now has the East West. They have of the hack, but not just in terms of the silhouette. They also have very rare collector pieces. Another obvious characteristic about this handbag is it's got the sangles and the lock detailing, the clochette. I think it's a very nice accent. Is it the most functional? No. Do people actually use the sangles? Maybe if you are Jane Birkin and on that occasion where you need to have your Birkin all closed up when you travel, but pretty much for the most part, the Birkin, even though they're not in use, I think there's a nice decorative, but like also functional element of these sangles. Another pro about the Birkin is it's leather lined. And I think when you just have a leather lined bag, it just feels that extra bit luxurious. The next point, which I think is one of the biggest draws for Hermes and how Hermes really does justify its pricing is the craftsmanship. The bags are made by one artisan. It takes something like, I don't know, is it 20 hours? I've read different articles, but it takes many, many hours to make one of these handbags. There's that famous quote, it's not a bag, it's a Birkin. And I think Hermes's commitment to craftsmanship is really second to none. Hermes gets to say, we get to price our leather handbags at this five figure price point because of the craftsmanship i don't think any of these other brands really can say that i think they're pricing their bags due to other factors another huge selling factor for the birkin and just hermes bags is the maintenance and repair very few brands offer this level of in-depth service you can have this bag get it repaired get it spied know that you can have that bag for the rest of your life there's something about how committed hermes is to 
their products. It's not something that you see very often in this day and age where the cycle of fashion is just so quick. In this era where fashion just comes and goes at the blink of an eye, there's something beautiful about a brand as well as this being like a family owned brand for generations. That commitment to heritage is also a beautiful thing. And while we see bags come and go, another way at which I think the Birkin is really able to stand the test of time is this bag was made in 1984. It's been 40 years, that is insane. This bag has been able to withstand multiple trend cycles, which is not really the case of a lot of handbags. Think about how many handbags come and go, get discontinued. And again, going back to my final point, I think the story behind this bag, while we've talked about the celebrity aspect of both of these bags, Jane Birkin is a very beloved, iconic figure when it comes to fashion and just pop culture, movies, music. It was just like the way she wore that bag as well as the way so many other famous fashionable women have worn the Birkin in their own ways. And while Jane Birkin may not be everybody's style, the way Victoria Beckham or the way Cardi B or the way Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen will wear this bag, it is so different. I think that's another cool aspect about this. Of course, with so many celebrities and famous people wearing a handbag like this, it really does add a level of perceived status. And this was not a bag that, well, I guess Jane Birkin, she was gifted or I don't know how she was compensated for the handbag, but these other celebrities, I could be wrong, but I think this is a bag that a lot of these women purchased on their own. Regardless, a lot of people pay really good money for one of these bags for all the reasons she just stated. And it does have a certain status. It is the pinnacle of all bags. Like it's the pinnacle bag. It's not for everybody, but for a lot of people, this is like the ultimate bag. So now that I've like totally pumped up this bag, now let's talk about the Margot. For the record, I do not think the Margot is the next Birkin. We'll talk a little bit about that, but I don't think it's the next Birkin. So one very appealing feature to me, it comes with a strap. Now the 12 also comes with the strap, the 15 and 17, they do not come with this extra strap. Another pro for me was this bag has a bit more of a generous top handle, but this is one of these bags where I can comfortably, very, very comfortably like crook of the arm it, I can top handle it. I can't like, it's not really like, meant to be worn over the shoulder. As somebody that likes to wear bigger coats, lots of layers, to me, the height of the handles is a very nice factor. Another thing that I had noticed as soon as I opened this bag, this bag is so lightweight and it makes sense. It's fabric lined. It has very minimal hardware. It's just got these little bits. I have some stuff in here because I'm using this, by the way but it's got like these little toggles. It doesn't have a whole lot of hardware. It doesn't have sangles. It doesn't have a flap. Another pro to me when it comes to this bag, it's a very easy to use bag. It's a simple in and out tote for me. I feel like this is just ultimately my grab and go bag. I have been using this nonstop since I got it. And another appeal I think for the row customer is it's very much that minimal, if you know, you know look. Most people will not recognize this bag. In contrast, the Birkin due to popular culture with decades of celebrities wearing this bag, it being featured on popular shows like Sex and the City, Gilmore Girls. A lot of people know what this bag is and what this bag means. This nowhere near that sort of level of hype. I do think more people are aware if you're like in this very niche world. And of course, because it doesn't have very very visible branding. 99.99% of people do not know what this bag is. Gotta really be tapped into this world of handbags. And I think that's why in particular, the larger sizes, the 15 and the 17, that has become a very popular work tote, travel bag, weekend bag, that sort of like style that you could wear as a carry-on bag. It's more low key, it's more understated. And in those situations, I think a lot of people find it very appealing. So the next point I wanna talk about is this is overall more available. I say this with a big star beside it because I'm comparing this to the Burke I think the Margot is getting more traction, but as these bags trickle in, they're still more available than Hermes bags, at least the ability to get one either in store at least, as well as the style that you potentially want. It is possible to get a, a Margot versus it is almost not impossible, it's not impossible. It's just more work to get one. Or you play the lottery in Paris, hopefully you get offered a bag. And there's so many factors that play with the Birkin. And the next point I wanna talk about is the price. Now this bag goes for 
90 US dollars. While this is not a deal, what I personally paid, I bought my bag pre-loved. I paid easily almost, I don't even like to say this, almost like nine to 10K more <laughs> than this bag. I It really kills me how much I spent on this bag, which was actually a deal. But if you were to buy this bag and you happen to get offer it new, it would be 11,400. And I'm saying that like Birkin 25 in like a Togo versus 3490. The way I justified the crazy price of this bag, I was like, by the time probably get offered this bag, it's probably gonna be the price that it is on Fashion File right now. Give me like three years, this bag is gonna be probably around the same price, which is when I'll probably be offered the handbag. So I just said, we're just gonna pay the premium and just hopefully never have to pay that much for a handbag ever again. I know, crazy crazy insane. There will be people that will say like 3490 is an obscene amount of money to pay on handbag. Yes, it is. It was a tough pill to swallow, but nowhere near the pill to swallow this. Really guys, if I were to get a black, I don't know what the pre-spend would look like, but if you go on reputable resellers, you're starting at $20,000 if I were to get the Birkin 25, probably even more. Whereas this, in my mind, for at least the amount of times I've already worn it, it feels, I don't want to say it's like worth it. I'm just overall more comfortable spending $3,500 on a handbag. I'm personally not at a place in my life where spending 11,000 if I bought it like from the boutique is a regular thing. Not that this is a regular thing either, but that's another topic on like the craziness of handbags. Overall, there's just so many variables when it comes to pricing and Hermes and how you get a bag, be it pre-loved or your pre-spend, the price isn't as clear, what needs to be done to get one of these bags, the kind of journey one needs to go on. They say it's a journey journey for a reason. The next pro for me when it comes to this, I think it is overall just for me a more carefree bag. When bags, not just Birkins, just handbags in general, be it Chanel, be it any other brand, if you start pricing your bags at like the five figure price point, I'm just someone who like is going to baby that bag. I, it's just what's going to happen. I'm going to want to baby that bag. Whereas the Margot, I don't feel the need to baby this bag. I have a toddler. It can get very messy very quickly. I can't really predict what's going to happen with him. This is why I I opted for the grain leather. I know they have a beautiful smooth leather. It is so gorgeous. But just for right now, I am in a position where I'm babying a person and I can't baby a handbag. This is why this bag barely gets used. This is a bag that I have not been able to put down. This kind of like carefree attitude towards handbags, this is just a personal thing. Do you know there are people, as well as Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen themselves, right, would wear their Hermes bags, as well as Jane Burke, and would wear their bags in like a very carefree kind of way. To me, that just looks so insanely cool. Cool. For me, I'm not in that financial position, nor do I want to do that with my handbags. I don't know. I just don't have like the coolness factor. If you have the style to wear this like Jane Birkin or Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, that's totally amazing. Another pro when it comes to this bag is for the row, this is a very beloved bag. And of course the Hermes Birkin is a very beloved bag. I want to say I'm not calling this the next Birkin. While it's a very beloved bag by not only Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen themselves, the bag that the brand keeps bringing back season after season in new iterations. Recently, they brought out the East-West version. They've had other seasonal iterations and it's been around for six years. And then finally, why I don't think the Margot is the next Birkin is it's a very niche style. While not everybody likes the Birkin, like a lot of people actually think the Birkin is like a really hideous, ugly bag. It's really boring. It's not very trendy. I've heard those kinds of sentiments before, but I think once you get into this luxury handbag niche and you really start noticing this, you notice that a lot of people do desire to get a Birkin or a Kelly if their style is more in the direction of a Kelly. And you do notice that a a lot of people on YouTube after years of collecting handbags, a lot of YouTubers, they do get a Birkin or a Kelly. But in contrast to that, I think the Margot and I think the Row, it's a very niche style. While I've seen maybe 15, 20 unboxings on the whole of YouTube, and this just isn't me just looking at my YouTube page. Like when you actually look at the financials of both of these brands, late last year, the Financial Times, while the exact number for the Row's annual earnings, they had an industry expert quote that 
the brand was somewhere like 300 million annually. Now I'm sure Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen could have corrected that statement or they could have asked for a correction to be made, but I'm gonna assume that's probably roughly where the brand's at now. The article did say that they have been growing steadily. If we compare that to Hermes in 2023, the annual revenue was 13.4 billion euros. The row is at 2% financially where Hermes is at. Hermes is in like the tens of billions right now. And I do think the row is going to gradually grow and they have shown that they have gradually grown, but relative to these bigger luxury houses, I think it's a very niche style. And already Hermes is still in niche aesthetic, but I think even people that may not vibe with the Hermes style or aesthetic, maybe they're more of like a Louis Vuitton or Chanel, like that's their style. A lot of people still will opt for the Birkin, even if it falls outside of their style. It's the bag that pretty much almost everybody wants, whereas the row is fine being in its own niche. Like they don't try to make a seasonal color variation of what is trending, right? Like last year it was all that Barbie pink color. That was what was trend forecasted. The row didn't issue a line of Barbie pink bags. I was like, we stay in our lane of being that sort of niche, very extreme, minimal style of handbags with beautiful quality. I just think it's such a niche style, even within this already niche world of handbags, right? This is a very niche world on its own, but even within this niche, it's like a niche within a niche that is really only going to appeal to like a small 0.1% of people. But at the same token, I think the Rogue customer kind of appreciates that. There will always be a customer base that appreciates that the Rogue is going to offer them the top of the line minimalist product. While we are seeing more people like Kendall Jenner, Jennifer Lawrence, Zoe Kravitz, they will wear the row. A few celebrities that are typically already wearing the row head to toe and they just happen to have this bag. It's still not seen on almost every celebrity. In addition to it doesn't really have the same heritage factor. Who knows where this bag will be in 20 years. I don't think it's the Birkin. I don't even think it's trying to be like the Birkin. I think there are similar characteristics, but if it wanted to be the Birkin, it would try to appeal to a greater mass audience, but it really does like to stick to its very niche audience. And when you look at a lot of these major handbag brands and they're kind of pivotal handbags, right? When you think about Louis Vuitton, think about like the Speedy, right? They're special, beloved, historical handbag. There's a Speedy for everybody. There's a different color. They have so many releases, so many collections, so many variations. Whereas there's not a Margot for everybody. Like not everyone is going to desire this bag. It is such a niche style. When people say this is the next Birkin, there are similar characteristics. It just won't have the same mass appeal. And of course that adds to the resale value of this bag in addition to the scarcity and the craftsmanship behind this bag. There's so many great factors, but I think one of them is the Birkin is a style that I just think a lot of people like. Whereas I think this is it's a very, very niche, minimal, style of handbag. Now when it comes to which do I recommend? They are different styles despite having very similar features. I really love them both for different reasons, but I think to me it's about the reasoning behind why you want this bag. I think for a lot of people the Birkin is that pinnacle trophy, that very very special ultimate handbag that you saved up for. At least it is for me and I think for a lot of people it is, right? Like I think it is still that special. While we're seeing it a lot on social Social media, I think it still is a trophy, special, pivotal, ultimate, however you want to say it, that dream bag, that holy grail, it's that ultimate bag. At the end of the day, you probably know whether or not you want to spend this kind of money on this bag. Maybe not now, but eventually, right? Like, you know. Whereas I think the Margot, the reasoning why I think a lot of people go for this handbag is, to me, it's more of just kind of that carefree bag. Ironically, kind of how like Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen did treat their Hermes Birkins the way Jane Birkin has treated her Birkin. It is not a trophy. It's like a bag that you can live life in. It can be a mom bag, a work bag, a dog walking bag, an errand bag, a weekend bag. And of course you could do all of these things with this bag, but I don't think that's why a lot of people buy it. And I don't think when people go on the journey for their like dog walking errand bag, they're buying this because it's that dream trophy bag or they're collecting it. It's basically for them an art piece. Whereas this, I think you buy this because it's a great carefree, 
casual, but also chic and put together bag. They have very similar features, but I think they serve very different purposes and needs in a closet. But I also think it's not just the wearability. I think you gotta like the vibe of the row. Like you gotta like the vibe. In terms of which do I recommend? I'm just gonna say the Birkin. To me, I think there's just so many pros to the Birkin. If you wanna go on that journey or you wanna pay the pre-love premium price, what have you, either way, it's kind of insane, but I'm just more inclined to say the Birkin. Chances are, if you are already on a handbag journey, you may already have your base covered with that carefree handbag. I am curious to see where this bag will be in 20 years. I do think there is a point when people say this is the potential to become an heirloom bag. It's just a very nice, elegant, but like carefree bag. There's so many nice features about this bag that I just absolutely adore. I really just can't ignore the pros of the Birkin, so I just have to say this. At the same token, I don't want this to be like, don't get the Margot. Like if you want the Margot, I really do enjoy the Margot. I have been using this bag nonstop, but again, it's not a bag, it's a Birkin. And clearly I would love to add another one to my collection. Not that I need another one, but it's not a bag you buy out of necessity. It is a bag that you buy because you love all of the heritage and the stories and the craftsmanship and all of the pros that we just mentioned. To me, this is one of my favorite carefree go-to bags. I have to pause when I think about wearing this bag. Already, I have worn this bag more than I have worn any my three Birkins. So if that says anything, there's that. If you want both, you just love like the vibes and the aesthetics of both. If you want the Margot vibe, but you want kind of like that OG Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen sort of styling, I would say get a vintage Birkin and wear it like Jane Birkin, wear it like Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, wear it, love it, use it, enjoy it. I just think there's something so cool about wearing that if you are really equally torn between the two, because I think you get kind of that slouch, that ease, but that elegance at the same time. If you can find one pre-love, specifically a vintage one, a 35 won't set you back as far as a 25. If you like them both equally and you're looking at the vibe, the look, the style, that's what I would have to say. So yes, that is my video. I know there has been so much buzz around this bag. As somebody that has owned them both, and while they are very, very similar, I think the intended purpose behind these bags are very different. That's why I love having both of them in my collection. And I would definitely love to add another Margot. I do enjoy them both for their own different reasons. That is my video. Thank you so much for joining me in another one, and I hope to see you in the next one.